اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم انشاءاللہ ٹونائٹ وی آر ہیونگ ڈاکٹر محمد یونس ایز اور گیسٹ اسپیکر اینڈ ان شاء اللہ ہی ول بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا الٹیمیٹ سیکریفائس آف ابراہیم علیہ السلام سو وداؤٹ فردر ڈیلے ڈاکٹر محمد یونس نحمد ونسلی علی رسول کریم اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وجب طلا ابراہیم رب بکلیمات فتم قال انی جا الکلناس امام قال و من ذریتی قال العین الحد غالمین صدق اللہ العظیم My dear respectable brothers, sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us with these 10 most important days, the first 10 days of Zil Hijjah. As we all know, every moment of these days is very important in order to, for us to get engaged in the zikr of Allah tasbih and takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever we are and to do as much righteous deed as possible and also to remind us the significance of the seerah of our beloved uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam our father and his great uh, example which he presented through his conduct and character and his struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to remember and also to follow. He went through very difficult and challenging tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at every test, he came out with flying colors with great success through his uh, sabr, perseverance, and uh, continuous struggle in the path of Allah to, pl- to please him and to achieve the objectives which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to achieve. And in this ayah which I recited from Surah Al-Baqarah 124, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember Ibrahim alayhi salam, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested. And uh, he came out successful. He fulfilled all the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him he made him the, the leader of the mankind as a role model for the mankind. And so let us just in the next few minutes quickly review some of the tests that he went through and particularly the greatest test which, was, which he was put through and then remind us that where do we stand looking at this great example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And before that, I like to remind myself and all of us about a hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam reported in Sunan al-Tirmidhi. The summary of that is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that uh, the people who went through the most severe tests were the Anbiya alayhi salam. And then after them, those who were very strong in the, in the deen, and the more strong they were in the deen of Allah, the, 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 the trials were very severe for them. And those who were weak in Islam, then they were put through some lighter trials. And as a result of going through these great trials, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them free of all sins. And they walk up this earth without any sin. And they're closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this tells us, that the purpose of the trials are to raise the status of those who go through these trials and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to bring, bring their status and position as highest amongst the mankind. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he fulfilled uh, his, his uh, purpose of the trials and as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him great titles. Uh, and he was, he's famous with these titles. The first and the foremost is a Khalilullah. That he is the 
closest ally and friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Ibrahim alayhi salam as his close friend. And then he was chosen as a role model for all the people to come. إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ حَنِيفًا حَنِيفًا وَلَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Ibrahim alayhi salam was a model of excellence, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfectly upright, and he was not a polytheist. And thirdly, he was given the title of Imam of the of the mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I certainly make you a leader and a role model for the people to follow. So these were the great titles bestowed upon Ibrahim alayhi salam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he went through these very, very difficult trials and he came out with great success. So just to remind ourselves some of the greatest tests that he went through, the first one was he started in his own home. and He, he was born and raised in the house of not only a polytheist, a mushrik, but a polytheist whose name was Azar, he was an idol worshipper, plus he was making idols as a business and selling them to the people to worship them. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he came out as a spring of Tawheed from the swamp of Shirk. This is a very, you know, right example that when there is a swamp of Shirk and out of that, at a spring of Tawheed came out in the form of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then he approached his father. He did not just stay quiet. He talked to his father and he told him, It's called Ibrahim al-Yabihi Azara. Atattakhidu asunaman aliha inni araka wa qawma qabhi dalali mubin. So he was very brave and courageous. And he approached his father, of course, with respect. But he told him that this is a, a very clear uh, error that you are in and you should correct yourself and of course quran tells us the his father was very upset obviously and he, he, he throw him out of his house and then the second challenge was the polytheists around in the society and ibrahim alayhi salam he took his message to the polytheists he was alone there was no supporter there was no other muslim besides him and Quran describes his struggle in that uh, society of polytheists, uh, ruled by the polytheist. And he argued with the idol worshippers with wisdom and with the very uh, intellectual argument to, to convince them that this idol worshipping is wrong and you should come to Tawheed. He gave rational arguments and he dealt with the disbelievers with his wisdom which Allah gave to him, and he continued to give his, his da'wah to them. And Quran gives us examples of his uh, arguments, or how he gave the arguments from the creation of the heavens and the earth, and creation of the human beings. And then later on, he was brave enough to break their idols into pieces. And when they approached him, he was not timid. And he told them uh, as in a rhetorical manner that maybe you should look at your uh, one of the these false guards may have done it. And that was to invite them to think about it, that how you could worship these statues who have who cannot even speak, who cannot do anything. So his arguments and his, his way of giving his uh, da'wah was, was full of wisdom and concern for the people to whom he was speaking. And then, as a result, the polytheists did not accept his message. Rather, they turned against him. And we know the story that he was sentenced to die uh, through the being thrown into, a, into fire. And that's what they did. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his power, saved him. And he said, Qulna, that, oh, fire, you should be cool and safe for Ibrahim, and that's what happened. They saw this miracle with their own eyes, 
And, and can you believe not one person believed Ibrahim alayhi salam's message, even seeing this great miracle before their eyes, nobody accepted the message. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They've They wanted to harm him, but they, we made them the losers. And they could not harm Ibrahim alayhi salam. And their persecution continued. And later on, Ibrahim alayhi salam had to migrate from his homeland and, and move on to, to Jerusalem, where he, he raised his family. The only person who believed in him was Lut alayhi salam, his nephew. And these were only two people and who, who left that place and went to Jerusalem. And there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him his son, and and that is the the greatest test that we are going to cover in the in the in the last few minutes. That he was, according to the reports, almost 86 years old, and he kept on making du'a to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that he grant him a son, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, His ultimate mercy, He granted him Ismail alayhi salam through his wife Hajra or Hajar, and this was a great news for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And when he was a little bit older to, to walk with him, and at that time he saw in the, in the dream that he was uh, slaughtering Ismail alayhi salam. And this dream came three times. And it was really hard for Ibrahim alayhi salam in the beginning to comprehend that. But then after, when it came three times, he was sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to put him through test. That his son was so beloved to him and he got it after so many years. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to sacrifice that. And uh, the reports tell us that uh, the shaitan tried its best to persuade him not to do so. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, he chose the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he went forward with full intention to do this sacrifice for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he took Ismail alayhi salam to Mina and he was, uh, he had a knife in his hand. He was about to do that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him that we accept your sacrifice. And instead of uh, Ismail alayhi salam being slaughtered, Allah gave him a lamb or uh, another Zabiha to do that. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the, the uh, intention and the actions of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna bala'ul mubin. This was indeed a manifest trial, a great trial for you, o Ibrahim alayhi salam. You have indeed uh, proven true to your, your dream. Inna kazalik najjil This is the way we reward those who are righteous. So the purpose of this sacrifice was not nothing else but to put Ibrahim alayhi salam through great trial and Ibrahim alayhi salam submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so did Ismail alayhi salam even though he was a young lad but he also said oh my father do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do you will find me amongst the patient and so this is really a great example of Ismail alayhi salam also. So the le lessons we learn from here is that uh, what really have the value is to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good things in life, like our children and our businesses and everything else, uh, has no value before the pleasure and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should express our shukr to Allah and we should... Uh, uh, give priority to the will of Allah. In this dunya, we have so many things that we love. Our degree, reputation, position, money, home, and so many other worldly things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ali Imran that we have made beautified the love of things uh, in this dunya, your family, and uh, heaps of gold and silver, uh, horses, and these days the cars and the land. But the enjoy, these are enjoyment of this world. Allah is the one uh, to whom is the best return. So what this is the lesson that we learn from this great example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that nothing should weaken our faith. 
we should not stop our movement to the cause of Allah, should not bring any doubts uh, regarding our responsibility, and, and we should not be enchained into these worldly things uh, and, and stay behind in the struggle for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not compromise that. And we should be steadfast in the path of Islam and be the Ansar Allah, as Isa alayhi salam called people, Kunu Ansar Allah. Come and be the helper in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, this is the way to success. And if we have to sacrifice our time, our energy, our resources for the cause of Allah, so be it. And we should be ready for that and give priority to the to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sacrifice in his way. Then we are successful in this dunya and akhirah, just like the great example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, that we are commemorating in these 10 days. And we should, inshallah, be steadfast on the path of Islam, inshallah ta'ala. So Jazakallah Asana Jaza, we repeat our dua just like Ibrahim alayhi salam did. Uh, there are so many beautiful duas in Quran. And these are the ones, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbana taqabbal minna innak anta samir alim. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept from us all the righteous deeds. You are the hearing and the, and the knowing what is in our heart and what we are, the righteous deed we are doing. And also we say, Hasbunallahu wa ni'm al-wakeel. Sufficient for us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the best disposer of affairs. So we turn to him for all our affairs and matters. And we turn to him to be our supporter and helper in the cause of Islam. So with these two short du'as, we conclude this reminder to all of us that let us always study the model of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which should encourage us to give priority to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every matter and utilize uh, our resources which Allah has bestowed upon him, upon us for the cause of Islam and should, nothing should slow us down. Jazakallah khair ahsan al jaza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair Dr. Muhammad Yunus, former national Amir of ICNA. Um, inshallah, we will meet tomorrow night. Our next guest speaker, Kaisa Raslam, chaplain in Rutgers University in New Jersey, member of General Assembly and former national coordinator of Young Muslims. His topics, uh, his topic will be the sacred guest who were visited Ibrahim alayhi salam. So see you tonight, inshallah, tomorrow 8 p.m. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.